Oh, thank you. It's nice to see, good to see you too. All thank right, you. here we are. It's seven oh eight, and this is the Senior Housing Subcommittee meeting, January eleventh, twenty twenty two. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20. Remote meeting connection is provided in the agenda which is posted on the town website calendar um we are called to order at 709 members present are carolyn ness pam predmore lily dwight and i believe annalee will join us late i know that she had um another meeting and I heard from Jennifer that she was not going to be able to make it because of a scheduling conflict with the historic commission or something I don't know whatever. Um, but in the meantime, I think we have enough people to vote on minutes don't we Carolyn. yeah there's three of us There's three of us Okay, um, I would entertain a motion about the minutes for June 27th. I will make that motion as presented minutes as presented Carolyn. Second, Pam. Okay, um, all those in favor, please say your name and say aye. <laughs> Go ahead, Pam. Aye, Pam. Aye, uh, Carolyn. Aye, Lily. Unanimously approved. Groovy. All right. Um, old business, the survey. There have been 192 returned. So we got a great, I, I had, probably about 28 emails from people asking for key codes after the chief's text. And um, then I had about five that I did on my own. Um, and uh, Annalise said that she's got 10 people who wanna do them on paper. And the paper ones um, ask people to drop them at town hall or mail them to the FERCOG. So I haven't heard from the FERCOG if they've gotten any mailed. But um, if we get 2,000, we'll be at 10%. So we're not 2,000, 200, <laughs> sorry. We'll be at 10% and we're at uh, 192. So I think we're gonna get at least 10%, which is awesome. Yes, cause I'm gonna commit to 10. And if we can get a few more in between, um, that will be really good. So um, we just gotta get people to do it. Two things related to that. Um, number one, while I while it's on my mind, Carolyn, can I just I do have access because Lily had sent it to me um, to the hard copy, but online, which I could then make copies of. Why don't I take that on? I feel like I haven't done very much, but that's something I can easily do. I can I can make 50 copies and drop them off at town hall. Oh, perfect. Well, what you want to do is if you could make 50 copies, put put 40 of them in on the table um, um, just as you walk in the town hall so there can yeah. be more hard copies. Before, can I interrupt before you do sure. can you print on both sides, Pam, with your print? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. I was just because it looks like so much if you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't mind just walking to the selectman's office and putting 10 copies into my box, that would be fabulous. Because okay. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna text or I think I'll email because it would be easier. Email to Lily, um, you know, 10 people that hopefully haven't filled it out. And um, if, if they have, Lily obviously will know the key code has been used and I'll try to, I'll just try to figure out 10 people. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, and anybody else, Pam, if you know of anybody, you know, just to ask them to fill it out, get the key code. I, I know too, and they both need help, which my plan to do that with them. Great. Perfect. So I think, I think we should, if we can, if, if all of us just commit to get a few, 
I, you know, I don't see why we can't get up to 250 or something like that. Mm. And that will get us. Well, uh, sadly, I mean, Jennifer said she's, I don't, she said she has not handed out any key codes. So I don't know what that means if, um, so I, and I wish she were here because I would like to find out if she's been like, can she mention it at every, <laughs> every day when, when the senior center is open, but um, I'll try to follow up with her on that. She did a great job. Did you see the article in the paper? Uh, no, I guess I didn't. I she had an article in the recorder and in the Gazette that she did with Chris Larrabee saying that it was extended for another month. And oh, perfect. And perfect. Stuff. So that was great. Yeah. Somehow I didn't, was it in today's paper? No, it was last week, I think. Oh, I can't geez. remember. I missed, sorry. I missed it too. Yeah, there I was, was a. Sorry, go there, ahead. There was a very brief mention about the inclusion of affordable housing in the article that had the picture of Denise Mason showing pictures yes. to, to um, Jim McGovern. And I, I was. I was pleased that there was at least that much of, of mention. Um, I was sorry that there wasn't a little bit more, but it is what it is. Uh, Jim, we, we just spoke about it with Jim. It's just the paper, you know, that was how it was written in the newspaper. Oh yeah. But yep. we did the whole spiel of the CCI. We talked about, you know, the putting in the housing in and that was part of our whole sell, you know, our whole sale of the whole campus process. And Jim, you know, obviously if if we lose the house or um uh or senate you know it returns to a republican we wouldn't be able to go through but um jim is pretty much committed to a like maybe a three million dollar earmark for our um thermo geothermal system and I know. that's exciting yeah i mean i'm just saying he was very willing to put that through and then another see the earmarks if you get around 3 million or less, chances are they go through. So the other earmark we were gonna ask for was would be for Elizabeth Warren and Markey, and he would coordinate that with his earmark for you know like the senior center or something like that. So um, it, it was really exciting because we think we can get through one stop. We think we can do the landscaping. I mean, obviously we won't know until fall, but um, Mass Works, uh, he's going to set it up, set us up with Scott Soares, who is USDA, and Scott Soares, he was used to be the um, agricultural commissioner. So, and I work with him for years and years as assistant ag commissioner here in Massachusetts, and also the ag commissioner. And then he is now down in D.C. And um, so he's going to, we're going to invite him here to Deerfield. And hopefully he can figure out municipal buildings because that was new information from McGovern was that some of the municipal stuff could be paid for through USDA. So I I have to tell you, and he wants to check in with us. He's gonna- uh, Carolyn, did you all talk about the complete neighborhoods grant? That Because we have that. Yes, okay, that, was, that was what, we, what will be the basis of our um, earmark was that you know, hopefully the complete network will have the engineering. Yeah, would give us a, at least some preliminary design. Mm -hmm. And then and the reason why we figured out that earmark is because that geothermal system was earmarked for the food bank, and it went through this this right now in cool. this cycle. So um, we asked for the same thing as a geothermal system earmark, cool. um, similar to what they did for the food bank. And Jim said he would do it. And That's then he would help us with another earmark through Warren and Marky. So that, I mean, that was a great article. It, I just love that he totally got that it's a vision thing instead of a reactionary thing and, and that he got excited about. It. Well done, you guys. Absolutely. Well, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, um, and rightly so. Good work. Well, this whole CCI was... This the committees. Yeah, this board out of six thousand. <laughs> yeah, it came from here, and the reason why is because you know, Lily and I have been doing this since the '90s, and we're sick of it, and we're going to make <laughs> sure we get senior housing. Yeah, I mean, we've been working on this literally since the last century. And so, 
Carolyn, I, we, I'm going to call for meeting drift in a second, but I did want to tell you about in the uh, community one stop, there is an underlie, underutilized properties program. Do you know about that? No. I was thinking about for the congregational church, <laughs> huh. right? Because it's what it is, is the 2021 economic development bill authorizes 40 million for the underutilized properties program to be administered by mass development for the purpose of funding, quote, projects that will improve, rehabilitate, or redevelop blighted, abandoned, vacant, or underutilized properties to achieve the public purposes of eliminating blight. Maybe this is the, the um, Cumbies. Increasing housing production, supporting economic development projects, increasing the number of commercial buildings accessible to persons with disabilities. Um, can you send me that? I, I can. Perfect. <laughs> Yet another grant, <laughs> yeah. but still, I mean, it sounds like it would be perfect for either the Cumberland Farms thing or um, the Congregational Church. Well, uh, what we were thinking of for Cumberland Farms is um, if it goes through, is there's 250,000, uh, everybody, every little, every town is getting 250,000 for downtown revitalization. Um, it's a Senate bill, so I, I don't know if it's going to go through or not, but we're earmarked for 250, just like Florida, just like Gill, you know, whatever. So obviously it's not enough to do anything real substantial, but we're obviously, if someone gives us 250,000, we're going to put it to work. And my thought was mm -hmm. um, to beat up Cumberland firms and see if we could get that property for like a hundred thousand and then um, use it, have money, have 150 left or a hundred left that we could put into rehabbing it for the library to use for their, um, transition and then when they're done um, put an RFP out for um, a developer that would do workforce housing yeah. on the top that would yeah. build um, you know housing on top of it and do a commercial thing underneath okay. and that we would right. be able to sell it. we're sort of drifting a little bit but anyway so the but, maximum award is that is no maximum but the typical awards are anticipated range from fifty thousand to a million dollars so perfect. I will send that to you. All right, let's get back to our agenda. Yeah. So one, I'm just... one, one more question. Sorry, getting back to copies. Oh, do you yes. want in, do you want any um, delivered to the senior center? Hard copies. No, um, Jen has 10. I gave her 10. Oh, all right. Okay. Now be mine. Okay. But thank you for the offer. Yep. I think we're better off actually just trying to um, go in our neighborhoods and people that we know that and ask if they filled it out or not, and then just stand there with their key code and have them fill it out and then collect it. And then- So oh, Carolyn, I mean, you guys, the key codes are up on the drive and I sent you all the link to that. So you no. can put up people's names for okay. the key codes. Okay, I can go look it up. All right, I'll try. <laughs> oh, Lily, you know what I am. I'm, I'm hard. Okay, well, I tell you what, um, after this meeting, if you want to stick around for five minutes, um, you will share your screen and I will watch you as you navigate to it and help you out. Okay. Right. Unless, unless I have it, I have access to it from the email that you sent me, Lily. Uh -huh. If I forward that to Carolyn. Oh, perfect. Wait, perfect. no, no, I'm going oh. to say no. Carolyn needs to stand on her own two feet. Ugh. Carolyn's a busy woman. I Carolyn know. has more than enough to do. I want to be able to do the the the. Really, I promise. Work. I promise that we can hunt in the Google so, Drive. Right. Here's another the problem. Time. I I am not comfortable having that information emailed, frankly, because oh, okay. it is it is. I mean, it's not like we have it associated with their answers, but if it's in the email world anything becomes possible right so that's why i put it on the secure drive there's the other option if you're comfortable with it uh has the screen frozen no nope. no okay sorry you're all just listening to i'm me. just like um listening yes <laughs> um i can go old world i'll print it out i will mail it or drop it off at town hall for carolyn there you go you can put it in her select board yeah, that but. would be perfect. That would be perfect. Because then what happens is I'll be able to check and see if any of the people that I have in mind have
have done it or not. And I'll just take my copies and go knock on their doors. Yeah, you won't, you actually won't. That won't tell you if they've done it or not. That'll just tell you their key. No, but I, I will have it. And so yeah. I won't have to write their number on the right thing and then find out that they've already done it or whatever. I can just yeah. knock on the doors. I was literally just going to go in West Deerfield neighborhood, you know, look at my street listing of anybody over 55 and just start knocking on doors, literally, until I get 10 or 15, whatever. You know from those from that list of key codes if they are in fact over fifty five or is everyone on there is over fifty five? Oh, everyone, everyone that's on that has a key code is over fifty five. Yeah, okay. But Good I know. I actually got a request from someone who is seventy one and his wife is seventy one. They were not on the list, so I generated key codes for them. And I told, I updated for a It might be that they aren't registered voters because I think it's a voter list. I'm not sure. Shouldn't were they be. were they new? Uh, they could have moved to town new. Have they been here oh, for a while? I think so. Hmm. Some. Well, our street list <laughs> is supposed to pick up everybody, but you hey, know. <laughs> I will just say that the chief's mailing was awesome. It was it inspired a lot of people. So. Yeah. Well, we'll have to thank John. That's good. Yes, I I did email him and thank him. Good. All right. Um. All right, so now we're actually going to do some work. I, I rather than just having fun talking to each other, we're going to work on the site feasibility scope, and I'm going to share my screen so that y'all can do this with me. Um, I only have one desktop, so yes, make it desktop one and share and. I'm going to hide floating meeting controls. And here we are. All right. So um, as you may recall, in our last meeting, we, we reviewed much of this. And we agreed that these are the things we filled in the site, that these are things that absolutely have to be done. Um, and this. <laughs> We were hoping that maybe with the geothermal engineering, some of the soils analysis um, and wetlands stuff would happen as a part of the geothermal, but we don't know. Um, but also if it's undertaken on behalf of senior housing, then it's covered for the whole campus. Um, can I just ask you, what was the timeline on this, Lily, again? Well, we want to send uh, utilities and stormwater. I mean, we can wait on this a bit, but nothing moves until this is done. We're, this is the RFP. We're going to send it out to a couple of design groups and ask them to price each of these chunks separately because we are going to say that we are exploring options for having a few of these things done. Like, I don't know what happened with your 319 uh, project. Okay, the 319 is probably not going to happen because our uh, the water table is so high that um, the the DEP feels like it's a risk to do the 319, anything to do with the 319. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. So, um, but I'm just trying to think how we would find out the. The wetlands delineation is going to be expensive, as is the soil analysis. But I think it is the correct thing to do to price each section mm -hmm. um, because I think if we can get some movement for some money on one of these projects in, in our campus, we would have, be able to do either the soil analysis or the wetlands delineation, um, especially if we got like uh, landscaping, parking, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's one. Of the we'll see what we get from the complete neighborhoods, and I don't know when Denise is meeting with them. I guess I should follow up with her. There was they sent out the official announcement. I don't know if you all saw that. It was pretty exciting. All right, we did also add the town bylaw review. We did see in the. Um, we also reviewed what Sunderland had gotten back. And we saw that they do take that into account, but we figured we'll just get it all out there, right? Yep. Um, so uh, 
the charge for this meeting is to discuss task six, which is site concepts. And we said that um, including we want to have a collaborative process to develop the site proposals. And we wanted to talk about the different levels of subsidies. And what Alyssa said is that, you know, it's a conversation, but we need to tell them how we're what we're interested in. Um, and so this was the other thing that we're going to talk about in this meeting is the meetings and site visits. What do we want to see? Um, and unit size options. I think maybe meeting the site visits we did figure out. One site visit to walk the site and review existing conditions, a minimum of two meetings with the Deerfield Senior Housing Committee during the project to present results and gain input, including one meeting to present findings of tasks one through four. We did do some work, didn't we? That's the site survey. This is basically the physical thing, mm -hmm. right? And then conceptual sketch plans and one meeting to present the final concept plans and master plan. So I think the hard work we need to do in this meeting is in the, so this says develop up to three conceptual sketch plans for potential 40B affordable senior residential development on the site, including preliminary location and sizing for proposed buildings, uses identification of major site access and circulation patterns, and a development summary on each option based on the assumed unit sizes within the residential footprints. And we wanted to add um, that the percent <coughs> So the percent unit size options, including ADA, because we started talking about this and Pam was talking about her experience and um, all that kind of stuff that, so we wanted to incorporate this. So to recap what we learned from Alyssa, all of Sunderland is affordable based on the area median income, the AMI. Uh, some of it is 100% subsidized. Some of it is subsidized at 40%, and some of it is subsidized at 60%. But the 100% subsidized is, I believe she said, correct me if I'm wrong, that there are reserved units for people who have vouchers. Like, I guess, Section 8 vouchers. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be Section 8 or possibly, I don't know, it could be it's been a long time, but MRVP, for example. Okay. That, that type what of are, state. What are the requirements for Section 8, again, housing? Well, uh, Section 8 housing that I've been experienced, I have experienced um, as, as a Section 8 tenant is that um, there are income limits according to household size. Mm -hmm. And the, t the tenant who gets a Section 8 voucher pays a percentage of their income towards the rent, and the housing authority pays the difference directly to the landlord. That the tenant's par portion is affected also by other issues. For example, if, and this may not be the case with what we're talking about, planning, but um, if, for example, the tenant pays utilities, um, when I was a Section 8 tenant, I was living in an apartment that was all electric. As you can imagine, my electric bill, wow. especially since the windows were thermal sieves, were skyrocketing, and we're talking like 40 years ago. Wow. Um, and so that reduced my portion of the rent, and the housing authority again paid the difference. Um, there are also some things like medical expenses that may kick in here, particularly if we're talking about seniors. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. that's basically what Section 8. The other thing about a Section 8 voucher, well, there are two kinds of Section 8. One, one type is not a voucher in that it belongs to the building. 
For right. example, the Clark House in in Amherst, in downtown Amherst, mm -hmm. um, that is those the subsidy stays with the apartment. Mm -hmm. Whereas a Section 8 voucher yeah. is mobile and um, theoretically can be taken anywhere in the United States mm -hmm. as long as you can find a housing authority to manage the, su the subsidy, to oversee it. Mm -hmm. um, and I say theoretically because there are some other things that sometimes kick in that make it difficult. Um, but one, one thing that private landlords like is the fact that there is a housing authority involved so that if there are any problems, either for instance, the tenants not paying their portion or the, they're damaging the building, um, they have people living there that don't belong there, that sort of thing. They have someone to go to, to deal with the issue. So that's that's what a section eight. Okay. So and I'm trying to remember. I'd forgotten, as you said, that um, sometimes it's not a voucher thing. It's it's a it's with the building, and so I don't that's correct. And I don't yeah. remember what Alyssa said uh, about what it was. But um, what is so the the size, the construction, the affordability is all a conversation, right? Because the cost of building, it does have to be recovered at least over the course of 20 years, apparently, or something, right? They, I mean, they can't. So um, the, oh God, I had the AMI once upon a time, it fell out of my head. Um, what percent of the building do we want to see subsidized at for, for people who have 40% of the area median income and what percent do we wanna see for people who have 60% of the area median income? I think that's, so the question is, <clears throat> um, maybe what we want is um, to see projections of size requirements based on the highest possible um, number of units at 40%. What does that sound like? As opposed to what? See, Lily, I'm just concerned that 40% isn't enough. Isn't enough um, what? Enough subsidy. No, no, no. Their income is 40% of the area median income. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I so see. as opposed to 60% would be someone with higher income. Right. Okay. I see what okay. you're saying. So okay. um, these are for people whose income is 40% of the area median income, which I think is, I don't know, is it like seven, 60 or 70? I don't know. Let's not. Lily, Lily, just to be clear, for 40%, are you saying people whose income is at least 40%? or less, and yes. then you jump up to people who are 60% or less, or between 40 and 60%. Yeah, Okay. that's my understanding. Huh. I could be wrong, but that is my understanding. Um, so we don't, you know, not having seen the results of the surveys, <laughs> it's hard to actually know who is, who is interested because what if it turns out that everybody who moves in has plenty of income who everybody wants to who would move in tomorrow i mean because as my mom used to say even rich people need homes right <laughs> but i mean they're not they're not ones we're really worried about right now um so actually i think what if we were to ask for um a model that can show us the, the balance between subsidy and um, um, the number of units, I mean, the, the buildability, right? I just don't under, so a builder might say, I can build, I can build and be comfortable building 
something with 30 units if 80% of them are at 60% of AMI because then I know that I can, I can pencil it out, right? So I guess what we just need to understand is um, the different models and the impact of... Bailey, why does, that, why does this impact the contractor? Is the contractor the owner? No. So the um, Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority slash RDI will be the owner. So isn't it up to them to decide how long their payback will be? This is what I asked Alyssa. I said, we are we are really intent on having this be is subsidized as much as possible. And she said that is a conversation that has to happen. And it can it sort of has to happen at this stage because and it's and it will include them. So what, what I just try to put in here is like how do we understand help us to understand this decision process so that when we go into conversation with RDI, we're not going to sit there and say, oh my God, it's like 80% of it is 80% of the units are for 60% AMI when we really need more that are fully subsidized. So a couple of thoughts, and, and I think you're right in that we need the results of the survey mm -hmm. to, to give us the input towards this. But the other thing that I'm wondering about is this has to have been done in other places like Sunderland. How did they come to that decision? Well, that's what I talked to Alyssa about. She said it's a conversation. And yeah, but can't can't we find out that information? Okay, Sunderland is going to have this, and West East Podunk is going to or already has this. If we can do some comparing in terms of size, it, is that is it, that at all useful? Uh, I don't see. I don't. I don't know because it depends on the size of the units as well. Size meaning square footage or size meaning numbers of bedrooms? Both. See, I, I think it's so important that we have truly subsidized housing for the most vulnerable population. Absolutely um, agree. So I I guess I, I need to figure out, I know obviously in Sunderland, whatever it is, it's $1,400 a month or $1,000 a month or whatever. That's, that is cheap, you know, given housing situation. But if you're a single woman, older woman on minimal social security. But Carolyn, that person presumably would get the full subsidy or they would be at the 40% AMI. And so that there's is a different rate, but it's still like 800 and something. I mean, it's not, it's not nothing unless they're fully subsidized. And even then, as Pam said, there's some contribution. So I, I've got to tell you guys, if my husband hadn't come into my life, I'd still be working because my pension, I would not be able to afford what you're talking about here. There's yeah. no way. Uh, See, I, 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 ju I just would still be working. Uh, my, my pension is not very much. And most women, older women, that is really true. And so I, um... all right. So, all right, let's, I, I totally agree. So how do we, the challenge we have right now, and you guys are seeing this document, right? Is how do we say when we're talking about site concepts that um, maybe we just say our goal is to have Um, not and not use that term affordable because affordable, no, right? Right, affordable, right. Right. It's not. Uh, our goal is to take care of our most vulnerable population. So can't can't we say our goal is to, um, and then we'll know from the basis of some of our surveys some kind of income 
amount eventually um, that that we want addressed. Or we could call up Social Security and find out what Social Security checks demographically are mailed to Deerfield, and and figure out. And we should we can actually just do the census age based income thing. Yeah. Um, just <laughs> the census is still a mess thanks to the Trump era. Um, the, but but the, I think as you say, our goal is to take care of our most vulnerable older adults. Um, but it's really old ladies. Let's face it, it's ladies uh, who have the problem. You know, and I just did. I just did some figuring, guys. Mm -hmm. If if I were still single and retired and trying to live on my current uh, social security, you know, I don't get social security. I'm not eligible for it. Oh. I get my pension from Hampshire County Retirement because the housing authorities are weird ducks, and that's the way it works. Okay. I would be able to afford. Five hundred and seventy dollars a month. That's what all. That's thirty percent of my of my current income, um, all on my own. And see, that's that. You are exactly the person that we are trying to address, and that's why I mean, I'm. You know, I'm seventy three years old, so I've been eligible for senior housing under the federal program since I was sixty two, under the state since I was sixty. You know, yeah. And and so th that's reality. So how do we the so I gotta put some put it to you this way. If they come back and they say we can't afford to build a, a place for 30 units for people at $500 a month. What are we going to do? Well, your, your, your document here says develop up to three conceptual sketch plans. So can we come up with three sketch plans with three different levels of subsidy? So many for the 40%, for so many for the 60 whatever that's what, that's what we're asking them to do not us so that's why i was saying our, our, so i think it's important to say what our goal is so the deliverable from them should be a model where we can plug numbers in and see what works right because then if we're short then we go to elizabeth warren and marky and ask them for an earmark to make up the difference so that we can have fully subsidized housing for our most vulnerable population. I mean, I, that's a huge doable argument in my mind. It's worth harassing them for. It's a place to start. Yeah, we, but we need that information mm -hmm. so that we can say, look, there's only, we, we can only have three units out of 30 units, you know, 10%. That for the five five hundred and seventy dollar month person, well, based on our survey returns, guess what? We have at least fifteen that need it, and you we know anecdotally there's more. So we're going to be short X number of dollars for our contractor, and this is what we ask for. You know, when we go to you know somebody like Elizabeth Warren and Markey. I mean, we're in a rural area that doesn't have good senior, fully senior housing. We're short. And we're turning, and, and people as they move out of their homes are putting their homes on the market and that frees up for, you know, other persons. So I'm just saying that I don't wanna get, you know, we, there, there are other ways that we can figure this out once we get some kind of model. Right. That's. I think yeah, we'll, we'll give us like, you're only going to get three units for the $570 person a month. Well, guess what? We want at least half our units. What's the difference? And then we go ask for the difference from somebody. That's all I'm saying. But we got to ask them for the model that will tell us how many we're going to get. 
right? Does that make sense? Yeah, because we need to under we need to understand how they how they um, compute. <laughs> That's basically yeah. we need to understand how they compute this thing, right? And what's doable? I mean, in current in today's current market, maybe you're only not you're going to get nobody to be able to do that. Right, so right. then we then we need extra money towards it to to make sure that we get a developer that will build be able to build it. I Lily, I'm I'm signed up for that tools for increasing housing production Very seminar good. on the 15th, September 15th. Very good. And, and we need this I, for that, but yeah. I think some of this stuff, it seemed like some of the stuff might be answered. Or, or they'll be talking about it because it's different ways to this count. Is to, this is to the developers. So, I mean, this is for an RFP. Let's back up for a second. This is an RFP. So we're telling them what we're going to ask them to deliver, right? Right. So we want a site concept, and but we want them to understand that basically we want a plug and play model so that we can try different numbers, right? Right. And, and if we're short, what are we going to, you know, what are we short? What kind of money are we short? I'm not even going to say that. We're basically, we have to figure that out, but we need from them to understand what the considerations yes. are, right? And what yes. the impacts are when you change. If we cut 10 square feet out of this, then we can, you know, we can add two more units with, you know, whatever. Yes. And, and that's, it's the, it's the balancing act of space, needs, costs, and um, funding, right? Perfect. So that brings me to a question about assumed unit sizes, mm -hmm. which of course you and Lily, Lily, you and I have had a quote discussion about. <laughs> yes, nicely put. Carolyn, we had a bit of a disagreement about what we thought was appropriate in the terms of size. And I, of course, am in favor of as many units as we possibly can build. Me too. Um, I know I, we have that problem too. <laughs> I, I will tell you, people are not going to live in a 300 square foot unit. They will I will tell you from my experience that they will live in a 415 square foot unit if it's all they have available. You I know, filled why them. Why would we do that to people? That I mean, just I, I don't disagree. People will desperate people. I'm will, not, you know, I'm not saying, okay. well, all right, I'll I'll be right up front with you. Of the two forms of senior housing that I managed in Amherst, those are Chestnut Court, which was built, I believe, in yeah. like 1947, and Ann Whalen Apartments, which was built, I believe, in 1975. The difference between the two of them, Chestnut Court were the ones that were 413 square feet, and Ann Whalen are the ones that were slightly larger. And I don't mean a lot larger. They were one bedrooms with a living room and a kitchenette as opposed to Chestnut Court, which was one bedroom, one, you know, obviously one, both of them had one ba bathrooms, one bedroom and Chestnut Court had a combined living room kitchen. Kitchen, I mean, basically the kitchenette was what, at one end of the room. Mm -hmm. That's That was the difference between those two. Mm -hmm. um, I had no trouble filling either size in the 20 years that I worked there. I, and, you know, I, as I say, desperate people will take whatever they can get. I would like us. I have to do that. I, and, and I respect better, that. I do truly do. And that I really do. I mean, I, I, and as someone who is of the age where that could be where I end up, you know, um, I have to say I don't totally disagree with you <clears throat> but, but, Lily, I, but I, I think it, the size you were originally talking to me about was it's like 850 850 square feet 
See, I was I was thinking of about 600 square feet, six to 700 square feet to get more units. Oh, I wasn't thinking of going down as low as 400-ish, but I wanted to get as many units as possible. And the reason why I felt that way is because um, if, if it was fully paid for or fully affordable, in other words, if someone could paid five hundred dollars and as and that was truly a third of their income for everything the utilities and you know that that was such a stress release you know uh, a relief to the to them for the housing situation that even though if it was tight and everybody wishes for more you would be happy because you don't have to worry you know you don't have to worry about snow removal you don't have to worry right. about no, and all I, I believe me, I, I, I guess uh, my, I do not deny that people will settle for whatever they can get when they're desperate. I believe that, and that we should build something better than that. If we can, I believe we should pursue it and not give up before we've even tried. And that's true. And that's why I'm I'm willing to see what we can come up with. Seriously, Lily. Okay. I'm, I'm to, okay. But there, there again, Lily. Um, I'd like to see see the floor plans with dimensions from a number of different sites. Well, go for it. I mean, Sunderland's got theirs public. Um, I don't think that we should look at places like Loomis because those are private nonprofits, uh, Loomis and Lathrop, Applewood. Um, those are hugely expensive too. <laughs> my, par my parents lived in Applewood in one of the largest units um, 25 years ago, shortly after they opened. And I can tell you how expensive they were then. Yeah. Yeah, and those are all private nonprofits and stuff too. Um, <clears throat> although the Loomis communities were operating um, subsidized housing in Springfield for quite a while. Um, I think I would rather find some that are comparable to what we're attempting to do. Well, that's Sunderland. In Sunderland, yes. Sunderland so is a perfect... I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. There's also the um, boy. This I went years ago. Those small, you know, on Route Five heading up to Greenfield. Um, so you're going north, and it's on the left side, and they just like they slid in this little development of oh, all yeah. these, like condos and um, right by um the liquor store. Yeah, right. yeah, or animal crackers around yeah. there. Yeah. And I spoke with one of the tenants there and he he really liked it. He liked that setup. And I, it's not veterans housing, though. I think it's it's a subsidized affordable housing. I think RDI did it. I'm not sure. I, I thought those were condos and the, those were owners. I seem to remember seeing signs, you know, like for sale. That may very well be. I, I honestly don't remember, but it was a sweet little setup. It means a sweet little environment. And they really squeezed it into a small space. Um, but there anyway. Are also, there are also some units, and I don't know what they what they are, what their funding is or, or situation, um, between one where 116 meets Route 9 in Hadley. Um, between assisted living Greenleaf, that one? No, 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 not on that side. Not oh. not on that side of Route Nine. The ones that are stuck back um, near Aldi's. Oh, I don't know. There are one. There are one story apartment type units. Um, well, about, do you want to go, uh, Pam? Do you want to see if you can do some investigation on units? That would be awesome. I think I think what I I'm not dealt with this type of housing that we're talking about or like Sunderland's done as you and I mentioned you know I've I've dealt with housing authorities mm -hmm. you know I know more about those 
However, I could start with RDA. RDI. 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 I still think of it as Franklin County Regional Housing Authority. Um, I could start with them. You know, if you gave me the contact name and, and number um, there and say, you know, what, who else do you know who's done this? Where else has this type of thing like Sunderland has been done? Is there some way I can get in touch with someone there and get more information in terms of unit size? So I don't know if you're watching what I'm typing, but so I will do an email introduction to Alyssa LaRose because I don't know that she's actually officially met you since she last came, she may have come to our meeting before you joined us. Um, and I will do the in email introduction and say, tell her what you're interested in, in understanding. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. That would be awesome. All right. I can, so I can follow up. You know, I don't know how long this will take me. It depends on how, when people will be meeting, would, would be willing to meet with me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you, I mean, in some ways you, you should be able to just to get. Um, you should get, get the information unit, over the unit, phone. Unit sketches, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to actually, I'd actually like to see unit sketches. And it may be public information just as Sunderland's is. Yeah. I just need to know where to look. Okay. Can, I bet Lisa can help you. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do, I will affect an introduction. Um, I don't think it will, would hurt to look at some of the older senior housing um, and see what's happening. I mean, what, what their units are like in Berniston, Northfield or Gill, because Gill, what is not that old. Uh, Berniston has been around hmm, quite a while because my grandfather worked on it with my father. So Oh, and he died in eight, my grandfather died in 83. So I would say that's been around for quite a while, but um, I know that Berniston loves their senior housing because again, mostly elder ladies, but um, the, it has been a, such an asset for the town, such an so asset. Would that involve calling the Berniston town hall? Same no, because it's all managed through, um, the housing authority. So which housing, would, which housing authority? Franklin Housing Authority. Okay. Franklin. Okay. So Alyssa, Alyssa will be a good contact. Yeah, yeah, she would have to. She would know where the, yeah. you know, the unit layouts and stuff. Because I know there are different sizes, but the single bedroom, um, little tiny kitchen, little tiny living room one, is pretty small, but. I mean, if you, if everything is paid for or you, it's affordable to you as the person living there, I mean, I, I really haven't heard any complaints from people. You know, it's my mom's age group people that are up there. And, you know, over the years, people seem to be pretty happy there. But I've, I also, that, that you just reminded me of something, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, the Clark House in Amherst, those apartments are in fact larger than Ann Whalen. And I know that because I had some tenants who moved into Ann Whalen and then when their name came up on the waiting list for the Clark House, they then moved there for that very reason. So I'll see if I can find out information about those units as well. Okay, okay. so in my notes, I have Bernardston, Gill, other local communities. And I just wrote Clark House in Amherst as well. And then there's also Sunderland, right? So that, and I would add in Northfield because Northfield was built not that long ago. And that is nice senior housing right off the main street. I don't know if you guys have I've not it. seen it. No, no. no, it's really beautiful. It's beautiful. It fits right into the community. It's really nice. Cool. That's good. We should find out who did it. All right. So it is 8.03. Here's what I propose we do. We um, continue to work on the scope of work. While Pam does this, um, while she does her research, that we not try to get this out the door in the next two weeks, that we take the time and we and we look at these different things. So maybe, um, Pam, do you think next week's meeting you would have some things to show us or at least share what you've learned that will be next week's meeting? 
Uh, the only thing that I should tell you is that um, I've been quite sick this week, this past week. Oh, no. Um, things have, yeah, I, I ended up in the ER. Um, oh, no, you poor thing. Yeah. You seem pretty perky today. Well, today's a good day. Yesterday was not. Um, oh, it's I'm It's sorry. been an up and down type thing. So um, I'll do my best. I just, you I'll know, you I what? may end up coming back and saying, I'm sorry, I don't have it. That's but, good. Um, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. We'll, we will we will put that on the agenda. And if you have not been able to get to it, we I, we always have something to talk about. We'll we'll know more about other things and we'll keep going. But that would be that would be great. I I I think this is really worth still pursuing um, to get this sorted out a little bit more. Because I, I agree. I agree. And I think that um, I was just really discouraged to see what the rental amounts were in Sunderland. I mean, to me, that's still pretty not affordable. And I you are not alone in feeling that way. That's why that's why we put this very thing into the scope yeah. of our conversation, because we want to understand what dictated that. So how do we how do we address it? Right. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be complex and we might have to have some more help, but, yeah. but one, and one thing I do want to bring up too, and I think this is really important about the small unit sizes and that's accessibility. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's an, that's an important issue. Um, because as you say, of necessity, an accessible unit, a fully accessible unit has got to be slightly larger. Yeah. Right. And that's, I guess that's where I'd like to see. I mean, we've been going back, eight, Lily's 800, my 600, whatever. <laughs> what is a fully accessible, say we take that 450 unit at like Ann Whalen house, is that fully accessible? How much extra square footage would make that unit fully accessible are we talking 700 square feet now to be fully accessible or or we are we talking the 800 that what lily is talking about i guess i don't want someone to move in and then have to have a wheelchair and and then move not be able to be yeah. there so i want to i will tell you you don't need 800 square feet to be fully accessible well okay and, but I, and design I'm, and it just has design is super important around that but I do think that, yes, it will take more square footage. And I do think I would strongly urge us to build every unit be fully universally designed and accessible. I cannot agree with that more. And I wouldn't want to even propose something that wasn't wheelchair accessible right from the beginning. T totally. That's the case. Then, yes, you are talking about l larger units, if only because the doorways have to be wider and the turnaround in every room has to be has to be much larger than they would be in an apartment where someone did not need a wheelchair. Right. right. So, but so, but in design, the design has got to be wheelchair accessible. That's all I'm saying. But to that point that that Pam made, then maybe what it means is we don't get two bedrooms, but we have a bedroom and a den that are fully accessible. You know what I mean? So that, and these are the exact conversations that we have to, to figure out because I do think it, it really doesn't make any sense to build senior housing that isn't fully accessible because as you point out, Carolyn, people are going to have to leave. Right. And you don't want to be able to do that. No. And, and I mean, the whole point is to make somebody be um, comfortable and not stressed out. We're right. going to, you, we're getting you housing that number one is affordable, but also that you can stay until your end. You're and forever home. Yep. Forever Going out feet first. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's called aging in place. Yeah. Right. Right. And so they have to, we have to have a decent enough size to do that. I, I wouldn't even, even though I want more units, I, I am agreeing a hundred percent. It's got to be accessible. So oh, then, we, yeah, we yeah I don't, Lily, one, one thing that I don't, quite agree with you on is this whole idea of a one bedroom and a den. Mm -hmm. I think what's more important is the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, the living room have to be completely wheelchair accessible. That involves more space. 
Mm -hmm. better to have just that and have more of them than to have i mean why why would someone need we have to sing room a, huh because there are couples who cannot sleep together and there are stages of life when you cannot sleep in the same room as your partner especially when they're very ill or when they're dying and okay. you need that space um but i think and that comes into the whole thing about we also want to have mixed income too we don't want this to be seen as the old people ghetto so we do need to um mix it up oh the only problem is i, I don't think people are going to see it as a because it's going to be lovely new housing so i don't think it's going to be a ghetto in that sense that but i don't know how many you i mean with so few units i mean we're talking like probably i mean hopefully we can get 30 units but you know we i think we would fill those up with with needful people well let's see what the survey says yeah yeah maybe we'll be surprised maybe we'll be surprised one of the things i'm having um uh we, we've got a, a a small grant and we're trying to update our vulnerable population list and you know in case we have to evacuate mm -hmm. um and um at a homebound list so we once that list is um updated this summer we can kind of go over that list and see who you know what what kind of income people have and and from that list um, just anecdotally, and um, that will maybe give us an indication too. Um, I, do, I just, I'm just so worried that we can't take care of, you know, some of the most vulnerable people, and we're forcing them out of the community. And uh, yeah. we just need to have more care. That's all. Or in fact, they're hanging on by their fingernails in a situation that is not safe or yeah. affordable yeah. yeah and i i to be honest i have someone in mind yeah. and and it's a constant worry yeah pam how long does it take someone to get a voucher these days isn't it a couple of years oh, oh my lord um that's a very good question i don't know that i can answer that now i can make a few phone calls yeah. But I can tell you that when I applied for a Section 8 voucher in 1970, no, 1979, it only took me 18 months. Oh, the last I heard, which was two or three years ago, we're talking more like eight years. Oh, my God, that's terrible. I, no, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. That's that's the reality of it. So, it, nothing, nothing, nothing happens soon. And, and that's with housing authorities updating their waiting list annually. And I know because I did it. And here's the reason I bring that up. How the hell do we get these people if they, if, if they have to take eight years? To... So, uh, well, we... that, that's if the, that's it takes eight years to get a Section 8 voucher. So it, you're saying, right, if the um, subsidy is with the apartment instead. So we don't that want a voucher. We don't right. Want so, so then I can't, I can't answer that because I had no experience with that. Right. Okay. But this is, that's, it occurred to me as like, I thought I remembered you saying that it took you a long time to get it. And I thought I remembered somebody else at like one of the housing things I went to saying it takes like six to eight years sort of a thing to get a section eight voucher. It does now. Yeah, so, it absolutely does now. So. And that's if we, have the voucher, right? if we have the voucher with the building that's a yeah. different situation okay different situation yeah. um and and there again it it's difficult to put years to it because you don't know until you get people moved in there and have a few years under your belt you don't know what the turnover rate's going to be right oh this is so complicated isn't yeah. it to try to do a good thing. I'm not, <laughs> I mean, I really, I, I, I know Lily, you wanted to get this out, but I think it's really oh, important. I, we gotta we do it right. I agree. We gotta do it right because 
I mean, the amount of effort that we're doing this and then to end up with not really usable units for our most vulnerable population is terrible. I mean, basically. So I, we need to figure out how we can get this to happen. So Pam, whatever you can dig up between now and next week would be great. That will give us more information. So we are in fact meeting a week from tonight. Yes. Yeah. Um, however, I mean, typically we are scheduled to, but would it be better if we just, if we canceled next week and went to the 25th and that way Pam has some breathing space since we just dumped a whole load of work on her? Actually, actually, no, I think, I, I think in one respect, it's a good idea for me to have that deadline. Okay. Because <laughs> I've been known to go, oh, I have plenty of time. I have two weeks. <laughs> and suddenly the meeting is tonight. So I, no, I would, I think and, let's, let's stick with. Yeah. And whatever you have, you have. And whatever right. you have, you right. know. And I think this is something then we can work on it and talk about it some more because Absolutely. the more we talk about it, the more we're understanding it too. Right. That's um, why we have working meetings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. This is, this is really important. So um, mm. I'll try to get some more information too about Sunderland in general from Tom Feidenkevich. Yes. Um, ask him about how did they end up with that? Yeah. Oh, and how does he feel about it and stuff? That would be good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him and try to get more background because, <clears throat> I mean, I think it's wonderful that they have it, but, uh, you know, I'm, I was just disappointed to see that there was not as many units available to people that really need, you know, they're very needful. So, but maybe based on our, our maybe uh, we, well, somehow we have to find out on our surveys, um, I think it, I think we do need to track down the census information because you're not going to get good survey res I mean, their most vulnerable population are the ones that you're not going to get your survey returns. Probably. Probably. Yep. You know, so unless we know individually who they are, like Pam, the one person you have in mind, have them fill out the um, survey. But but you know, so I will tell you this. That remember, there's a market demographic um, work that has to be done. That's a separate <laughs> RFP, and that's the market, and that's who we're talking about now. And they're going to be saying, they're going to be looking at the average income of people eighty and older, and all that kind of stuff specifically. Mm -hmm. So um, that is work that they will. Do. Um, maybe then what we want to do is get working on that next week after you know we'll get Pam's report about what she's got with the expectation that she may need another week to finish it up but maybe next week we start working on the RFP about the demographics and get that out there because that will give us more information yeah maybe that's what we need to do it's just that a lot of your most vulnerable population is, is usually the one that gets skipped all the time. Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here is for them, right? That's why right. we're all here. Right, right. And that's, you know, somehow in that RFP, we've got to make them pick up the group that is most vulnerable. And I don't know. All right. So that's what we'll work on next week. Okay. Pam, will, right. Pam will fill us in on... Um, the different unit information sizes. I can get. Yeah. And I think that will help us in understanding how we want to craft the market study. To yeah. Carolyn says. Yeah. Yep. I think so too. The more we talk about this, the more um, we're getting ideas on how to attack it. All right. So okay, next thanks. week, we work on the RFP for the market study. Carolyn, you're going to talk with Tom Feiden Kevich, yeah. whose name I cannot spell correctly. So I'm not going to insult him by trying. Um, and um, I'm going to do an email introduction to Alyssa so that Pam can try and find the um, floor plans for. I'm going to pick her brain. Yeah. yeah. That would be perfect. So Thank I you. Have, so I have three tasks. One is the double sided copies, 40 for the table at Town Hall, 10 to Carolyn's box at Town Hall. Um, also to Carolyn, my second task will be 
copies of the list of the key codes. Okay, hard copy. Really, that's like 30 pages, even double-sided, just so you know. Oh, whoa. That's a lot of paper. Maybe I can give you paper, Pam. I may yeah. ask you for it, but for right now, I'm all set. Okay. It's... And then the third thing was all of the phone calls. Yes, yeah. Pam, somehow Pam ended up with a load of work on this one. Yeah, but I haven't been able to do it. I feel, I this makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm really able to contribute. And so far I haven't been able to do much. So oh. this is good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Wonder Thank you, Pam. You're helping it out, helping me out tremendously because I wanted to get out and walk walk around and make sure I get those surveys done this week. So, um, because this, I'm the same as you, I'll be like all of a sudden, oh, we have till the end of the month, and it's like the end of the month. I got to get going on this. I, <laughs> maybe ten. So, oh yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move so, we I move we adjourn the meeting, and I will second that, Carolyn. All right, I all those can. in favor. I, Lily. I can. <laughs> unanimous. Shock. Unanimous. Okay, and we will next meet at July 18th at 7 p.m. And I'm going to stop my sharing and I'm going to.